Hey besties, my name is Mina. Welcome to my channel Mina Reads and today we are starting a new weekly reading vlog. In this weekly reading vlog I'm going to be reading four different books and there is one book in here that I have a very unpopular opinion on so I'd be interested to see what this comment section is going to look like. So let's get into the reading vlog and I hope you guys enjoy. Alright, so these are the books that I think I'm interested in reading right now. So we've got Oops, we've got The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. Then I have Wash Day Diaries by Jamila Rouser. <clears throat> Losing my voice, we hate to see it. And then finally we have The Death of Vivek Oji by Akwake Emezi. I read Akwake's most recent release, You Made a Fool of Death of Your Beauty, in June. So I definitely want to read more of their backlist, so I might pick this one up. And I was listening to the first chapter on audio last night, and it seems like really interesting and juicy, so like, yeah. So... These are the options that I'm working from for right now. We'll see. You guys know that I am like morally opposed to a TBR and I just cannot stick to one for the life of me. So we'll see how things go. This isn't set in stone, but this is what I'm going to try to get into today. Also today, I'm planning to go to the thrift store. So I will show you um, what I get if I get anything particularly interesting from there. So yeah, um, I will see y'all in a little bit. I'm back. My background looks crazy. I'm getting dressed for a date right now and I have to do my hair. So we're in the in, in between phase between ugly and baddie. So I just got back from the thrift store and I went to the record store. I did not get what I wanted from the record store. I was trying to find this Fleetwood Mac album and they did not have it. Well, they had it in like a CD format, but I, I wanted the vinyl. So I will keep on looking um because there's another record store in my area so I'm gonna check there maybe next week or something I don't know um but I did end up being really really successful at the thrift store so let me show you what I got because it was fun doing my little thrift hauls in a previous vlog that I did so <laughs> um so so I got this dress. It's really, really pretty. I feel like you can't see it because the light is like a little bit too bright, but it's like this pretty purple uh, dress and it's really, really long and it just looks really gorgeous on. I tried it on and like it doesn't fit quite as tightly as I wanted it to. You can probably hear my family being insane in the background, but it doesn't fit quite as like tight as I wanted to but I'm probably gonna get it tailored and like the back is really pretty it's like lace-up detail it looks nice um and then I got one of those like button-up denim skirts that used to be really popular maybe they're still popular but I always wanted one and I never owned one so I'm living my fantasy I got these denim short shorts I got this um very lacy see-through thing um for a cover-up because i'm going to the beach i'm going on vacation in two weeks and i needed a cover-up because i don't own one so gonna use this i finally clothes wise i got this dress i think this dress is probably my favorite thing that i got um it's this green dress i do have a picture of me in it so i'll like insert it but it's this green dress with like a square neckline and it has like a flouncy skirt it's very cute very very cutesy and adorable and i've been very enamored with the color green this summer so um yeah but in book news i bought two books um for two dollars 
yeah two books for two dollars so i got nothing to see here by kevin wilson this is like a short speculative literary story it's basically about these two characters who were like besties at boarding school when they were younger some time has passed and now one of them um is the parent of these two twins um and the twins have the power to catch on fire whenever they want to so they spontaneously combust sometimes and they have like these fire powers so it makes it very hard to like take care of them and she needs some help so she calls on her old childhood bestie to help her out and so i guess this is about them like both raising the kids i don't know that's kind of what the synopsis makes it sound like but I can't be too sure about it but I do know that I have seen this cover a lot of different places it seems to be very well loved on Goodreads at least in terms of like ratings I feel like it has like a hundred thousand um ratings or something like that on Goodreads so that means it's in front of a lot of people's eyes at the very least um and yeah also it's pretty short it's under 300 pages and you all know that I love a good short book and then I got Clara and the Sun by Katsu Ishiguro and when I tell you that I have no idea what this book is about like not a single clue but I do know that it was like one of the most hyped releases of last year and it was there for a dollar so of course I picked it up why wouldn't I uh I, I just can't resist that one dollar deal like my thrift store is so so dangerous so yeah, let's read the back. Let's see what it says. From her place in the store, Clara, an artificial friend with outstanding observational qualities, watches carefully the behavior of those who come in to browse and of those who pass the street outside. She remains hopeful a customer will soon choose her, and when the possibility emerges that her circumstances may change forever, Clara is warned not to invest too much in the promises of humans. Interesting. I did not know that it was about an AI, but that's cool. I really like AI stories. I haven't read too many but i feel like the few that i have encountered where there's like an ai that has their own like personality and their own wants and desires and stuff i always find it really really fascinating so that sounds like something i could really enjoy so hopefully fingers crossed it'll be a good one and yeah that's my little thrift haul now i need to go finish getting ready for my date and yeah hopefully the next time you see me i will be talking to you about a book that i've actually read Hey, hi darlings so i'm back from my date and i also just finished wash day diaries by jamila i want to say both authors names this time uh, by jamila rouser and robin smith and this is such a cute graphic novel and i highly highly am recommending it so wash day diaries is a series of i want to say like collected short comics that are interconnected but it's not like one specific narrative where we're following this group of four friends and their experiences um we're following this group of four friends and their experiences um but these experiences are filtered through hair in some way or another so like we have our first character who we're introduced to kim and kim is kind of in this like weird relationship um with this guy and like she has an ex-boyfriend that's sort of stalking her and so like we're experiencing her fielding those emotions and like the annoyance of this constant pestering while she engages in her self-care activities and you know like she does her hair and this is you know her wash day and we have her other friends like she has a character named i want to say her name is Devine. is that how you say it she has a character Devine. Devine is really depressed and so it talks a little bit about how um, you know, she's been struggling to care for herself and um, one of the ways that that's manifesting is like through her hair and she hasn't been keeping up with like her hair routines and things like that. Um, it's, it really showcases like the way that hair is really a bonding experience Think of going to your favorite beauty supply store and like meeting up with your hairdresser and catching up with them or doing a friend's hair, doing a family member's hair, how bonding and connecting that experience can be. Um, and it's really just, a, you know, a series of stories about this friend group and them talking and bonding and vibing together and it's just so so cute so sweet um the art style is really really gorgeous i absolutely adore the colors in this because it is is like very pink toned um but it's just it's just so gorgeous i love everything about it um and i'd highly recommend it i think it's gonna hit especially hard if you are a black woman and you have black hair and you know you understand the black hair experience like very intimately i think it's gonna hit super hard but i think that anybody could read and enjoy this um because it is really great and it has great like themes about friendship and mental health and just like all that type of good stuff so it was really incredible i liked it a whole lot also there's this one character named nisha and her life was so messy and i was living for it so it was great i would definitely recommend it if you are a comic graphic novel type of person 
so I think I'm gonna get into the death of Vivek OG it's pretty short um, I think it's like maybe less than 250 pages and y'all know I love a short book um, so I think I want to dive into this today and I I don't know what else I might have planned for today um because I went on my date and that was fun we got hot pot hot pot is so good like highly recommend if you've never had it it was delicious um I can't believe it was my first time but it was good and later on today I might be doing something with my mom we're doing like this walking tour of Philadelphia because like We've lived in Philadelphia our whole lives, but we've never really done any of, like, the touristy stuff in the city. So we decided this summer we're going to change that. So we're going to do this walking tour thing later, but that's happening tonight. So I've got a few hours where there's nothing really going on right now. So I think that I'm going to get into the death of Vivek Oji. And yeah. So I tried a bunch of different books. I was trying to get into them and... I don't know it just wasn't working out either so I ended up starting this monster romance which just released recently it released like two days ago it's called inextricably tied by Aveda Vice and this is part of like a duet I want to say so the first book is called skin or rather it's a novella it's like a prequel you can read it if you want or not it's mostly just smut but this one actually has a plot and it's about these two characters named Harbinger and Flint. Harbinger is a banshee and Flint is like a gargoyle and they are partners and they're like private investigators and so they investigate like supernatural crimes together and there's also loss of sexual tension between them and in Skin the sexual tension between them finally gets resolved to a point um, and so in this installment of the series they are already like sexually slash romantically involved but there's still a lot of unspoken tension in their relationship and they are about to embark on this new investigation where they are trying to find out where the bodies are um, from this serial killer who he murdered a bunch of girls and he's been captured but they have yet to find like where he was storing all the bodies so it's up to Flint and Harbinger to find out where he's been keeping them and in so doing Harbinger has this power where she can like touch an item and then she's able to see like the past and the events and the emotions surrounding the item which usually helps her with her investigations um in this case she touches an item that belonged to the serial killer and it actually attaches her to the serial killer's night terrors and so the night terror is like a a sentient being that was living inside the serial killer's head that now has like its own corporeal form and so the night terror his name is agony and so agony flint and harbinger are like on this private investigator road trip to figure out what the serial killer was up to it's it's kind of involved but yeah so that's what it's all about i am about 60 percent into the ebook for that and i mean so far so good it's really interesting i feel like the world building is kind of cool the characters are interesting. I really like the character dynamics because Flint and Harbinger are like together but not fully like they have yet to become like fully emotionally vulnerable with each other and so this book is really exploring that the fact that they are together and that they are partners and that they've known each other for so long but they still haven't like completely open themselves up emotionally to one another which I think is really interesting so I love the way that that's being explored this is also a polyamorous story so they do kind of introduce Agony into their relationship dynamic which is really fascinating and Agony is my favorite character he's so funny and I love him and also I just feel like the way that he's described he's kind of like this like shadow monster thing and it's all very interesting it's all very fascinating I'm having a good time with it so yeah that's what I'm reading and that's what I'm planning to finish today and I'm about to go um, somewhere I don't know I'm leaving my house because I am just bored and also I bought this new like workout set and I feel like it looks cute like I think that I look incredibly hot so I'm gonna leave the house so that somebody can see what I just wasted money on um, and then I'm gonna finish this book and probably later on today I'm gonna to wash my hair because it desperately needs to happen I'm trying my best with this little headband ponytail combo but I don't think it's doing me too many favors so the hair does need to be washed tonight um, and yeah so hopefully by the time I update you later on I will have finished this book maybe I will have started or continued on with one of the other million books that I mentioned to you guys but we'll see all right
walk slash library excursion and i did also kind of sit down for a while i think i maybe recorded some of that i did sit down for a little bit and i did do some reading so i am now about 80 percent through inextricably tied i'm still really enjoying it it's also really really hot like one thing that i really like about monster romances is that the, all this can just go there and be a little bit weird and a little bit wild and it just makes for such like interesting steamy scenes because there's no rules because the author gets to make up the rules because monsters aren't real and i think that that's really fun and exciting so yeah things have definitely heated up i mean it's been spicy the whole time the very first chapter of the book is spicy times but in particular the spicy scenes that we're getting in this later half of the book very wild very outlandish and very exciting stuff so i'm really enjoying it again i still think the world building is really cool because harbinger she like the stuff around like harbinger's backstory there's kind of like this convent where banshees go to like train their powers and that's really cool i'm just having a good time reading this really really good time reading this um so i am still hoping to finish it today but i am planning to go on a walk with my mom um because she wants to go on a walk so we're probably gonna go to kelly drive and i may record some stuff there because it's really pretty on kelly drive so yeah i'll see you guys later hopefully i will have finished the book by then So we're giving my mom a guest starring role on the channel and she's going to recommend you a book because me and her have very different reading tastes so I think that she'll be able to get something good out of her. So, do you have your book ready? Are you ready to talk to the people? Uh, you I, just said you had the book ready. I have the book. Okay, alright, hold on. Wait. Let me go up to my Audible and see what, what the exact title is so you guys can reference it. <laughs> alright, so what are you recommending to the people? So... I read this book called The Richest Man in Babylon. The author is George Clanson. Last name is spelled C-L-A-S-O-N. Anyway, it's a really short book and it kind of gives you a roadmap on how to get your finances together without being overly complicated. So basically what it tells you is you should always have a certain amount of your income towards your debts, towards your savings, and towards your expenses and if you follow that method you won't be broke so i think it'll be really helpful it's really short i think the book may be like a hundred and something pages if you get it on audible it's only four hours so it's a quick read but very valuable all right thanks mom you're welcome all right besties it's 10 p.m i got back from my walk a long time ago and i've just been sitting and reading and i finally finished up inextricably tied and i think i'm going to be giving it like 3.75 stars or something like that i had a really fun time reading it um i will definitely say that i did have a little bit of a hard time buying into some of the emotional elements of the story and like the characters are supposed to be in love and i felt like there was something a little bit missing for me between the initial meeting where they begin introducing agony to their relationship and when they're like expressing deep love for agony's character like i feel like there was a little bit something there missing lost in translation for me so i don't know if like the love element of the story was perfectly done for me but it was just a fun story in general like i said this is a monster romance like paranormal suspense and i think that the world building was fun the mystery that they were trying to solve and the way that it you know ended up the you know 
not the plot twist but like the reveal i thought that all of that was really interesting uh the writing style was awesome um and it was just it was good i like the characters i like their relationship and the dynamic and everything so it was a good time so i think i'm gonna give it like i said about 3.75 stars it was cool and yeah i'm gonna be moving on to something else uh, i'm just gonna shower go to bed and tomorrow i will be starting something else and also tomorrow without a doubt i will be washing my hair and if i don't wash my hair tomorrow I I don't know something bad's gonna happen because I need to wash my fucking hair so it's gonna happen hello vlog I just got back from the grocery store I had to get a few things for breakfast um, and I needed to get more coffee creamer so just got back from the store I'm about to make breakfast it is already like 10 30 so I'm having a late start to my morning but um, it's Tuesday I've got a lot of stuff that I need to get done today um, I really need to clean my room I need to edit two videos I need to finally get around to washing my hair um, and also I want to start or rather continue on with the death of Vivek OG I'm know now that there's definitely going to be some you know some complex familial relations but i wanted to pop on here and tell you that last night after i signed off the vlog and i was charging my camera so i didn't film any clips of it but um so i read volume five of spy family and i really really didn't like it i'm gonna be completely honest i enjoyed um most of spy family up to now i think i remember really disliking volume three um and now i'm really disliking volume five and i think that is very cute in a found family way and i do really enjoy those aspects of it um and i do think that lloyd's long-term mission is interesting but i feel like this volume in particular very much felt like filler and i find that the filler usually tends to involve the stuff that anya is doing at school like you know the exams that she has coming up and she's studying and things like that and while i do think that anya is a very adorable character And while I do think that Anya is a very adorable character, um, and I do like seeing her, and I think that she's, you know, funny and a cute little menace or whatever, I just don't really care all that much about the stuff that's happening at her school. I know that the stuff that's happening at school is plot relevant because her school stuff and her getting close to this little boy, Damien, is like important to the overall mission, but I just don't care. The, to me, the most interesting parts or the the parts that i am very invested in have more so to do with the adults and i just feel like there's not as much of the adult plot lines in this book or in this particular volume is very much about anya and like her school friends and her studying and stuff like that and that's fine but it just was so boring to me and the ending of this volume introduces like a new plot twist i guess or a new plot element that i really really do not care for so I did not like this volume at all. I'm giving it two stars. Um, yeah, hopefully volume six will be better. But yeah, I just was very, very uninterested in everything that this volume had going on personally. Despite, I still like this series. I still think the series is good, but like this one was just so boring. It very much felt like filler and I could have done without it if I'm being honest. So yeah, um, but I read that last night because my hold was expiring today. Um, and so yeah gonna try and read Vivek OG today we'll see how that goes and I feel like this is gonna be another long vlog so I apologize I don't know why my vlogs are so long these days maybe it's because I can't shut the fuck up but hopefully you guys are here for it so yeah okay hey besties many hours later I finally washed my hair I blow dried it I need to like trim it um but we haven't gotten there yet and I have my handy dandy bandana on again uh because I'm about to do some cleaning my room is a mess as always so yeah I'm gonna be cleaning and I'm gonna be continuing on with the death of Vivek OG uh and I have the audiobook from Libra FM so I'm gonna listen while I clean but I am about 75 pages into it so far um the writing style is just absolutely gorgeous Gorgeous. and um this is kind of like i want to say a dual timeline narrative or rather a non-linear narrative so we do get scenes um 
post Vivek's death and like the way that his family is grieving him but we also go back in time to when Vivek was a child and what his life was like back then what his life was like as a teenager as a young adult um and at the point that I'm at right now Vivek is a young adult and he is I want to say that he is just depressed um but his family believes that he's like sick and he's also beginning to present in a more feminine manner and I don't know if Vivek is um, trans or not yet, but or if he's just presenting in like a gender non-conforming way. But essentially, um, everyone thinks that he is maybe gay. There's some concern about that, um, and it is leaving him feeling a bit ostracized in his family. And he is just like really depressed and going through it. And so this is really about uh, the way that the people in his life and in his family are kind of reacting to Vivek and Vivek's new like gender expression um and the way that he is not eating and not sleeping he's behaving kind of erratically his family's really worried about him and while they care about him there's also a sense of judgment there the familial dynamics at play here are really really interesting this line in here that I really really loved um and is from Osita and I I feel like I forgot to mention this is like multiple POVs so Vivek does have his own chapters but his chapters tend to be very short just like a little paragraph or so of insight from him and for the most part we are learning about Vivek and his life from outside sources. I would say primarily Osita but there's also um chapters from Kiveta who's his mother and so in Osita's chapters there's this one line where Osita is finding some stuff out about his own mother Osita and his mom have a, a not a great relationship they're pretty distant he doesn't really feel all that connected to her especially because she's a super religious person and he is not so that has really kind of alienated him from her but he finds out some stuff about her essentially that she had some miscarriages after giving birth to him and how that impacted her like mentally and emotionally and so there's this line where he says I couldn't imagine what she'd gone through, how much of my mother's life I had missed because I was a child. And there's something about that line that just is so brilliant to me and I just love it so much. I think that uh, familial dynamics, parent-child dynamics are so interesting and I always love reading about them. And this line just really hit me incredibly hard. I'm still concerned about some of the uh, relationship elements of the story. Uh, we haven't gotten too into anything wild it, it there was this one scene that was pretty outlandish but we haven't gotten anywhere too wild yet and i kind of can't wait to see where the story is going but i also am kind of scared to see where the story is going so i'll update you guys a little bit later when i do something else or read some more or whatever all right hi friends so i am about to go on another little walk in another one of my little workout sets that I bought um, and I have not yet worn to the gym uh, but I wanted to give you my final thoughts on the death of Vivek OG so I am not going to be giving this book a rating because I I have no idea how I would rate it because I have some very complex feelings on it so I'd first like to say that I think that Equike Amezi is a brilliant writer I think that they just have such a beautiful grasp of language in general I think that the prose is completely excellent I think that the themes that they engage with um, particularly around around homophobia, around gender and gender expression, um, around toxic masculinity, family, community, friendship. I think that all of that is really interesting. Um, I also think grief and the way that grief is explored um, and the way that they chose to have this story be about Vivek but from mostly outside perspectives and how other people view Vivek and how other people's relationships to Vivek, how that shapes, you know, Vivek's legacy and the way that Vivek lives in each individual person's memory I think is really interesting concepts um, and I did enjoy reading about them uh, to a certain extent I think that they were all you know pretty well explored and I liked them um, but I think that overall I would say that I I don't know if I ever fully emotionally connected or invested in the narrative in the way that I feel like I was supposed to the way I was meant to especially based on the way that so many other people seem to have read the story and like felt really emotionally moved by it and were like crying and everything like that I just really don't feel like I ever felt that um kind of connection to the text I mean objectively it is sad that Vivek died and in the manner that um Vivek died and everything like that and the grief surrounding his death the way that his death impacts the community and his family um you know objectively is all very sad but i just did not 
connect to it emotionally in the way that I think I was kind of meant to. And then also I would say that, um, I already mentioned this before, but I really feel like the relationship between Osida and Vivek, I don't think that it was like, I mean, obviously I would say that it's not necessary. I don't think that incest is ever necessarily, you know, is ever really a necessity in any story to be honest. But I think in this one in particular, I don't think that there was anything interesting about Vivek and Osida's relationship nor do I think that their relationship was particularly deep or that it went any deeper than the back of Vivek's throat because they basically had a very regular childhood antagonism slash you know familial platonic love for each other as children um that was supposedly sexual to some degree and then they have beef when they're teenagers and then when they're like in their early 20s they're fucking like there's nothing about that the dynamic that it is explored between them that is interesting to read about like I just don't I don't feel the supposed depth of connection that they were supposed to have um so it just was like what what is the point of me reading about them what is the point of them being together in the narrative I think that they could have just been friends and that would have been fine like they could have been childhood friends uh or they could have just been completely platonic cousins or they could have just been completely platonic cousins who had a really you know close connection and they were like brothers or whatever but I just don't think that there was anything uh really gained by them being romantically and sexually entangled and I don't think that uh there was anything about Osita's chapter specifically that really felt like wow this is just such amazing insight into who Vivek was as a person um because I just didn't yeah, I just didn't, you know, didn't work for me. I didn't do anything uh, for me, nor for the narrative, in my personal opinion. Um, but I'm sure that my opinion is different than everybody else because everyone else who has read it seems to think that it's just so beautiful and heartbreaking and so touching and thought-provoking. And I don't think that it really provoked any particular thoughts in me other than, hmm, why are we doing that? Uh, I think that the most emotionally effective uh, perspective in this was Vivek's mother Kaveta. I think that she was really interesting in her grief and I love the way that the author plays around with this idea of like you know this li very limited perspective of who Vivek is because we only really know and explore Vivek's characters through the eyes of other people who have very different relationships with him like Osida and their sexual relationship, his mom and their obviously like parental familial dynamic and the estrangement that exists between them but also the intense love I think that it's all really really interesting really a fascinating narrative I think it's well written to whatever degree any piece of art can be objectively good I think that this is that it is very objectively good but I don't think that I I don't think that I liked it that I enjoyed it um or that I have like the deep appreciation for it that everyone else in the book community seems to have but it was you know it was a good book because Akwege is a good writer, but did I like it? I don't think I did. Um, so anyways, that's that on that. Um, thank you so much for spending a casual week reading with me. I had a good time filming this, although I didn't absolutely love everything that I read, but there was a few high points. I did really enjoy Inextricably Tied, um, and I did enjoy Wash Day Diaries. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for watching. Hopefully I'll see you in my next one. Bye, you guys. Like, comment, and subscribe, and a special thank you to all of my wonderful, wonderful patrons.